Hello, my name's Paula Young and I'm here with Guitard in London and I've got a brand new recipe for you. It's a bit complicated and there are a lot of elements to it, but it does celebrate three of my all-time favourite guitar chocolates, which is 72% onyx in a delicious brownie, 38% soleil d'or, the creamiest milk chocolate you'll ever have, and the new Eureka works for the 150 year anniversary. I'm going to make all the components and then start putting the dessert together. So first let's make the brownie. In my pan I've got butter, unrefined light muscovado sugar and some golden syrup and I've brought it up to a caramel. As soon as it starts to boil turn the heat off. Add in my chocolate. So once that is mixed in, take it off the heat. I'm going to throw in my eggs. No need to whisk them beforehand. I don't believe in any excess work that does not need to be done. And the heat in the chocolate, butter, syrup and sugar will start to cook the eggs and make the mix really thick and glossy. Eggs are in, plain flour. So that's mixed, pour it into a lined baking dish. It makes about an inch deep brownie so we get really generous cubes when we cut it and it bakes at 175 degrees centigrade for about 25 to 30 minutes. Time for the toffee, and it's a malt toffee. Very different because we're not cooking any sugar, milk, cream or butter. We're taking malt extract, which is this delicious barley malt, which smells a bit like a mix between marmite and jam, but it tastes very smooth and gives a really rounded flavour. And I've got some melted 38% soleil d'or, so all you do is melt the chocolate, have the malt extract at room temperature and mix the two together. And it does create a plasticky, which sounds odd, I know, plasticky texture. And it does make the chocolate seize a little bit, but it forms a natural toffee. And all you do is mix that together. Don't slow down the mixing because it will seize completely if you do that. And what will happen is you'll get this very soft toffee-like emulsion from adding the malt. And I'm going to just pop it into a small ring or mould to form a shape so we can cut it later. Place it in the ring, pat it down, get your hands dirty and then pop that in the fridge for at least an hour to cool down and when it comes out it's this more firm but pliable disc. Pop your pan on, get it on a medium to high heat Nibs go in the pan, so these are going to warm through. At the minute they look very pale. As the heat gets through the nibs, they become much darker. So we're going to put our first little drizzle of syrup in. It will fizzle a little bit and then immediately stir. So now you can see the nibs have become very dry again. They were sticky with the sugar. Now they're dry, so we add another spoon of sugar. And follow that rule. Don't add any more syrup until they become dry. Last addition of sugar. We'll get every bit out. Mix that in. And as soon as it's really dry and not sticky, turn the heat off. We are three components in, brownie nibs and toffee. There are now three more. A salt water ganache, some scorched thyme to go on our chocolate tweaks and some whipped goat's cheese. So what I've got in there is my water, my salt and I've got some melted guitar 38% soleil d'or to then blend the water into it. And all you need to do is bring the water not to the boil just until the salt is dissolved, turn the heat off and then pour the water into the chocolate. Whisk that together, it emulsifies immediately so there's no need to get a hand blender in there, you don't want to aerate it, you want it to stay very, very silky smooth. Once it's completely mixed in, that's it. Let it cool, pop it in the fridge. Now it's time for our scorched thyme leaves, and I love thyme. Sweet, delicate, lovely in a dessert. We're going to swap our pans over, a little frying pan, and we're going to turn the heat up. Take the leaves off, and as soon as the pan is very, very hot, we're going to throw the leaves in, toss them once, take them back out. And these are going to stick to chocolate twigs and they will add a really beautiful fragrance. They're going in. Sprinkle them in. Just a little toss around, over, and take them out. So pop those aside to cool off. 
super fast and it smells amazing. Now to make our twigs. We've tempered our chocolate, it's silky smooth, it's at the right temperature, it's set beautifully. Let's make our twigs. Baking tray with some baking parchment, greaseproof paper, plastic piping bag or paper piping bag. And I'm going to pipe various sized twigs onto my paper, which is just long lines. They can be a bit knobbly and twisty. It's the leaves that make them look really twiggy. The key thing to remember is to sprinkle your leaves on before the chocolate sets. You have to be a little bit careful just to make sure that the leaves do hit the chocolate. And put as many on as you like. There we go, they go in the fridge. 20 minutes, no longer, because we don't want them to get wet from the cold in the fridge. So our final component is a whipped goat's cheese. This is a soft Welsh goat's cheese at room temperature. Some of the 38% solid d'or melted, but not warm. So it's, it's probably just above room temperature. And some double cream, which is at room temperature. You need the chocolate and the cream pretty much the same temperature. Goat's cheese in the, in the bowl, just break it up with your whisk. I'm going to add in my chocolate. The chocolate stabilises the goat's cheese, adds some sweetness, just ties the whole dessert together because we are celebrating three of my favourite chocolates. And the double cream goes in. Just get the whisk in, move it around, but don't vigorously whisk it, which is why I'm not doing it in an electric mixer because it will over mix it very quickly. Okay. That's nicely soft. We're going to pop it in the fridge. The chocolate will cool down and set. And then, finally, we can plate our dessert. We have all of our components. We've got our ganache, our chocolate, our nibs, our twigs, our brownie, a little bit of sea salt, our goat cheese, and our toffee. First thing I'm going to do is just cut my toffee into even cubes. And there's no rule on the plate. This is however many you feel like giving to your guests. Depends on the size of your plate. Same with the brownie. So the brownie's been chilled, cut into cubes. We've got to start with the chocolate. Let's cut the end off the bag and we're going to pipe some dots of chocolate around the plate. I'm going to pipe some different size dots on the plate. I'm going to take a pastry brush and I'm going to drag the chocolate in different directions around the plate. So I'll be piping on nice domes of ganache. So I'm doing different sizes of dome on our plate. Our brownie's going to go on. Again, positioned in a haphazard manner. It doesn't need to be too structural. I'm even going to lie one down, which for me is a big leap. Fudge, our little toffee fudge pieces, they're going on. Feel free to build up a bit sideways. I'll turn the plate around so you can see the front of the plate. I'm now going to add some of our goat's cheese, which is a lighter colour and a more slightly acidic lactic taste, but this is going to be very, very small dots. This is just to add lots of dimension and depth. So the twigs have come out of the fridge and they now do look like twigs. They've got the thyme leaves. These can be positioned on our ganache, leaning up against our brownie. Some of our crunchy nibs, which are panned nibs, around the dessert. This is going to add crunchy, sweet, but very cocoa beany flavour to the dessert. It's delicious. So that's using three chocolates, the 38% Soleil d'Or, 72% Onyx, which is now brownie, and the Eureka Works to celebrate 150 years of Gittard. Brownie, water ganache, malt toffee, panned nibs, goat's cheese, and our finished dessert.